All right, welcome back everybody. Time for three more games. Okay, got our next opponent, Warfruit. So we're on the play again, making up for being on the draw twice. Now we are even, and we definitely have the redraw. No one drop, triple, four cost, finisher, because that's what Mortar mostly is, a finisher. Yeah, redrawing into this power hand is awkward, but not much we can do about it. Um, yeah, I think I prefer playing the seed here, because <coughs> this is basically ready from now on. And if we draw a sigil to play this turn two, we can still play it with the sigil. We don't need the seed for it. And we did. And we're going to do this because it's more power efficient and the better units, so to speak. Looks like we're up against Praxis, most likely. Or at least a Praxis variant. In. Praxis opponent not having a torch is always great. Seems like he might actually have a torch and not use it, which is weird and questionable, but not going to complain. Always take, like, questionable decisions from my opponents, gladly. But yeah, if he has a torch there, he probably should have torched this. Hey, I didn't see that one coming. Guess I would have left torch open then. But yeah, it's okay. Um, since... He's unlikely to have another sword, and if he has like a Justice Source and a Rune Hammer, we can't do anything about it anyway. Might as well <coughs> deal the extra damage here with the Waykeeper. Flooding out this much is not nice, but we are still in an okay position, since he doesn't have a Titan... Uh, or Titan Influence, rather. Okay, good that we have an instant answer to this sword to prevent annoying shenanigans. Boom. That was good value, basically. And this was a great draw, putting him suddenly at the brink of death. All the war cry. And even a harsh roll is not a great answer here. An answer, but not a great one. And we have a bunch of top decks that just win the game. Mortar, Scepter, Charge Unit, another Torch, Rock Slide. Rock Slide. Hello. Boom. And boom. Deck's working like a charm right now. There we go. Ooh, and upgrade. Hype. Nice. All right. Next opponent. Okay, found our next opponent. Ender. We're on the draw again. And since we're on the draw and don't have a one drop, even though this hand's pretty nice. I want to redraw it, because I just don't like no one-drop hands, especially on the draw. That's why we play 12, because we really want them. They're kind of integral to our game plan. That's also the reason why I would consider playing more than 12, if there was good enough options. <coughs> more yetis. In this almost yeti tribal deck. All right, so I guess we just attack on and probably considering to block. Like, what? Why would you not attack and not block? That makes no sense. Opponent just doesn't make any sense at all. But okay. That's fine. Just want to curve out, basically. And we have an answer to champion and an answer to the impending doom. If he is burn queen and not Cheeto. All right. That was like the weirdest early game line. Made no sense. And yeah, now we have like some nice non-interactive board, some backup. 
give us an impending doom to turn it into your impending doom. Would also not mind something like a scepter or cinder yeti off the top or something. He just pop in. No impending doom. Let's hope he doesn't have an answer for this, because kind of need this guy still. Yeah. Feel free. No blocking happening here. Okay. Kind of a good draw. Allowing us to keep up the pressure and have something meaningful to do this turn. And we are definitely so well positioned on board and in the race that I'm not even concerned with blocking his guys. That's okay. Still not interested in blocking here. But probably gonna have to aggressively permafrost. That was a kind of a good draw because it's great at blocking. And then I think I'll just permafrost this 3-2. Especially because he might be like... I don't know what... And yeah, we have the water to finish him next turn through. Almost anything he can do. And like if he queens here, we just jump and win. So <clears throat> Nothing I'm afraid of here, really. And yeah, it's still kind of a close call between Mortar and Rampage with the deck, ultimately. Alright, let's just Mortar this and then just attack. Like, if he blocks the two biggest guys, he goes to one and loses his board. That's fine. Why would he not kill the outlaw? That makes no sense whatsoever. That was so bad. And pointless. But okay. I mean, we still cannot lose on the backswing, really, because he has to block. And even if he wouldn't have to block, he could at best deal 10 with a queen. Alright. Got him. And another chest. 5 0. Pretty impressive run. Deck's definitely capable of powerful streaks. Alright, one last opponent. Alright, last opponent, Cuddle Ball. Once again, no one drop, but this hand is so good that I might actually want to keep it. But it's like kind of awkward. We don't do anything on one, on turn three, we only play something wasting a power. I think I actually just want to redraw. I think it's probably wrong to keep hands like this. And mulligan into hands like this is awful. What can you do? But yeah, I think keeping a hand of four two cost cards with an aggro deck that has a lot of one cost cards is not a good plan. But yeah, that's definitely one of the more discussable hands in the comments, for sure. Let me know what you think about this hand. I think the problem is not doing anything on one and doing something inefficient on three seems too bad to keep. And seems to me like it's giving up a win percentage. <coughs> but maybe two champions and good power and power to non-power card ratio and everything might be just good enough to keep it, I don't know, with the uh, with the chances of drawing into one cost cards for turn 3 at least. But yeah. Ta -da. Our hand is like at least turning out okay. Until we kept drawing power rather than unit or scepter even like a thinder yeti on top would have been welcome but none of any of that unfortunately 
This is probably going to be the first loss of today. Can't win them all. Plus, I may or may not have wrongly redrawn. But yeah, I'm still fairly confident in the redraw. I mean, it's unlikely and unlucky how it turned out. But um, yeah. Right. There we go. At least we found a unit, so there's that, and it can fly over a tarot. But it's probably going to be too slow of a clock if he has a tarot now. We might have to draw like a power to just three for one hour, uh, one for three ourselves against the tarot. Yep, there's the tarot. Give us power. Up. Nope. No power. So I guess we just attack, and he's not going to block. Yes, interesting. Not see that coming. So we got rid of this Tavrot in a really hurtful, painful fashion. Yeah, I don't have high hopes of winning the game on it. Basically that. Protect. What's it with people and protect? Sabotage so much better. Yep, that's where we die. And I guess we can see if we draw a permafrost. No. Alright. That draw was just too bad and he had the right things to deal with it. But yeah, 5 1, pretty great run. Had some really nice games to showcase a couple of things and have some uh, more intricate decisions, I'd say. So, yeah, that's my current take on Skycrack deck wins. Deck's pretty sweet, very solid ladder deck. I have a win rate over 60% with it on ladder over like 200 games, I think. So, it's definitely. A good performer, um, although probably not the best choice available right now. There is better decks like Argentpot Midrange, but it might be the best aggro deck of choice if you're looking for an aggro deck. So that's it again for today's Eternal Top Decks video series. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please don't forget to like down below and subscribe if you don't want to miss any future videos and you can find any other information in the description underneath the video importable deck list donation link social media and stream and so on thanks for watching everyone see you next time i'm out bye